cryptocurrency is basically a quantum shift in consciousness around like what is money. We've 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 always had a unit of money at some point in time, whether we were using clams or we were using coconuts or shells or whatever as a, as a system of accounting. So what we're doing is we're transitioning at the moment and uh, the space is becoming very dynamic and active and it's shifting, it's moving rapidly to a point where um, it's difficult to keep up with it. So what if you understand how money's created initially through the fractional reserve banking systems and central banks previously, What's happening now is people are um, taking action themselves and taking control of their own systems and creating cryptocurrencies for themselves and their own systems. So in effect, basically becoming their own central bank. So what is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is a form of tokenization and programmable money. And some of the, um, the cryptocurrencies have what they call smart contracts and ability to be able to um, have the precedence for whatever the nature and the agreement in that community or between those parties for the transaction is uh, to be in place so it, if it's unless it's all unless it's fully fulfilled the transaction doesn't take place so what's happening at the moment is the communities are evolving um, I think there's like there's over um, there's over 1,500 cryptocurrencies in the world, and that'll probably explode to being millions of different types of cryptocurrencies in the world eventually, depending on different communities and different countries and different professions, etc. It's It's fast. It's fast and it's efficient. So what we have traditionally with different types of banking, when we want to transfer money previously, overseas through different systems like SWIFT systems, is that you, it, 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 if you want to send $10,000, it would take a long time, maybe five days, and also it'd be expensive, it'd cost you a couple hundred dollars for that transaction. So it's faster. Um, currently, organizations and payment gateways such as Visa at the moment have the ability to, to, to process probably a small transaction, amount of transactions per second. With some of the cryptocurrencies that are being developed, their level of speed and efficiency will have them the ability to process like several hundred transactions per second. So it's like, it's the quantum shift in efficiency. And the exciting thing about cryptocurrency from a consciousness point of view is that we're very much into making sure that the currency or ensuring that, that people are educated and know what decentralized currencies are. So it's like no one owns them, no governments own them, none of those entities with all those issues that have been raised in the past and, and the problems that have caused. In, in my experience, most of the conflicts and wars that have been caused in the world have been around central banks in, in being imposed in other countries. That's been part of the agenda under the guise of of conflict. But what the exciting thing about blockchain and cryptocurrency is, is that it'll make available banking to what they call probably 2 billion people in the world at the moment that are the unbanked. So anyone that has a $40 mobile phone will be able to have their own wallet. Everyone will be becoming their own bank and they'll be able to receive money and payments from anyone anywhere in the world. So there's, there's the decentralized currency, which is the freedom. And um, uh, William Gibson, the, um, the sci-fi author, his quote was, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed yet. So the information and the technology is there with the decentralization, but um, what's, a, what's occurring at the moment, there's actually a there's an energetic war that's playing out in the financial systems at the moment. This is the shift in consciousness and the decentralization of power between governments, well, with, with governments and central banks. So it'll become borderless. So there's the decentralized currencies and then there's the agenda that they're trying to bring in centralized and controlled and government issued. Governments are trying to control it at the moment. The market just keeps going like this 
on the back of the news because governments step in and try and say that they're going to control or they're going to ban or they're going to outlaw any, you know, the cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin or whatever. But the reality is, is that the cat's out of the bag, the genie's out of the bottle, and it can't be controlled anymore. It can't be controlled. So it is very liberating. Anything that's debt orientated and then um, able to be multiplied out through a fractional reserve banking system doesn't have any place in the world and where we're going in the future. We, we need to get away from debt-based systems. Some people are, spec are speculating that um, for the majority of um, professions where uh, trust has been an issue and um, that um, the, the central banks and banking systems might even become obsolete within five to ten years. So everyone gets their own wallet, they are in effect becoming their own bank. Um, and there's um, projects that are coming up where um, that, that they can actually lend peer-to-peer -peer financing as well. So it's going to be an interesting time. That paradigm is shifting and a lot of those control systems and structures are becoming obsolete and uh, there's some really good people that are working in the space to ensure that that happens and um, the debt-based slavery system uh, has run its course and um, has, hum has had impacted humanity for long enough and uh, those days are numbered, even in Australia for example. So. Um, David Medcalf, head of ASIC in Australia, is quoted publicly in the media as saying that uh, between five to ten years that banking could become obsolete. But like I was saying, there's also an agenda there to bring in centralised banking. If centralised cryptocurrency comes in, that means that they'll have the ability to control, monitor, tax and confiscate money at will. So. We're very much about and passionate about having people be educated and know what's the difference between centralised currency, um, which is pretty much an extension of the previous paradigm and system that we've had previously, and promoting decentralised currency. The current system of banking that we have in most of the Western world is what we call a, a fractional reserve central banking system. So how that works in effect is that government um, issues the currency. So a lot of people don't realise is that the US Federal Reserve is actually a private corporation. It's not a, it's not a public, it's not a government entity. Um, and those organisations have the ability to be able to pretty much create uh, fiat currency out of nothing. And we've experienced it post global financial crisis 2009, which is coincidentally how cryptocurrency was born out of that transition. So what happens with fractional reserve banking is that when you deposit $100 into your bank account, the bank then claims that as an asset and then technically and lawfully that no longer becomes your property, that becomes the bank's asset. And then the bank has the ability to lend out up to 21 times that amount. That's highly fraudulent, um, which, um, which is a very good business and how banks got to need to be bailed out is, uh, is another question within itself as well. But all those debts have been paid, passed on to the citizens of those countries where the bailouts took, took place. And after that, what's happened is what they've passed or in the process of passing is what they call bail-in uh, legislation. So that if ever the bank uh, fails again, that the account holders within that bank will pretty much get treated as shareholders and what happened in other countries where um, the bailouts were created is that people woke up in the morning and then basically had money skimmed out of their bank accounts. So this this has all been born, this shift in consciousness around cryptocurrency and particularly decentralised cryptocurrency has been born out of the frustration uh, and creative minds and genius of people that are, that are about creating decentralised currency and creating freedom where no one owns and controls and monitors that currency. So it's still early days in the market and there's early adoption at the moment, which means that the market is still highly volatile. Um, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's over 8,000 exchanges 
in the world and there's over 1500 cryptocurrencies. Um, we talk to clients and um, recommend that sort of staying near the top 40 um, and there's many exchanges and wallets. It's just a matter of going onto the internet, doing a search for a, for a, for a wallet. There's, there's quite a few. Uh, and you can download your phone and I've had people be set up and given them cryptocurrencies within like 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, there's a number of exchanges, there's probably over 8,000 exchanges in the world now. So it's a matter of um, getting jumping on one of those exchanges, uh, setting yourself up with a wallet and um, transferring money from, your, from a fiat currency uh, to an exchange and then purchasing any currencies. It, it could, sometimes it can take a little while for verification um, sometimes it's a matter of it can be done within an hour. So um, we recommend that people do spend spend as much time as possible um, doing some research and checking things out, getting any understand getting understanding before rushing in and um, and making rash decisions. So if you're starting out and you're wanting to invest, um, spend the time doing the research and checking out the information. There's websites you can go to like coinmarketcap.com and you can check it out, have a read of the projects and find out what they're about. Particularly if you're part of Conscious Community, you want to be able to create and be able to invest your energy into projects that you're passionate about and that are aligned with you. So some of the, uh, some of the cryptocurrencies are available for only a few cents. Some of them are like we're in, Bitcoins are about $10,000 US at the moment. So you can buy a fraction of that as well. So if you wanted to buy $10 worth, you could buy $10 worth of Bitcoin. If you wanted to, you could buy $10 worth of Ethereum. So it's not about having to buy the full token value as well. But I just encourage people to do as much research as possible. Don't go to any fear around missing out. Cycles keep moving up and down all the time. And um, yeah, do your research and find something that's aligned with you. Just watch it for a little bit before you jump in and have any fear of missing out. There's many platforms starting to come out. And we're proud of the fact that uh, Brisbane's becoming one of the uh, crypto hubs in the world for the future for, for cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of great minds and innovators in Brisbane. And uh, what you would need to do if you wanted your business to be able to accept cryptocurrency is have a conversation with them about getting set up uh, with a merchant facility to be able to receive cryptocurrency fast and easily. We've got conferences coming up this year and there are quite a number of venues, hotels, bars and restaurants um, that are now taking cryptocurrency as payment, which is quite exciting. Businesses are developing merchant facilities and also there's ATMs that are available for distribution of for people to be able to purchase and sell cryptocurrencies now as well. They can be a cash machine, so you can go to a um, a cryptocurrency, a Bitcoin ATM machine and put cash in and receive uh, cryptocurrency. Or you can also sell cryptocurrency and receive cash for your currency back out as well. So Bitcoin's interesting. Bitcoin, um, the reason that Bitcoin's so popular is because it's it has the largest market capitalization of any of the cryptocurrencies. And as a brand, it's most well known. What gives Bitcoin its value as the leading cryptocurrency with market capitalization at the moment is the fact that of, of its scarcity. So there'll only ever be tw over 21 million uh, Bitcoins that are created. And its ability to be mined and created halves about every four years. So it becomes scarcer and scarcer. So that's what gives it its value as well as its demand. So who knows what will happen in the future? It's speculated that quantum computers might have the ability to be able to hack Bitcoin. That's a possibility as well. But um, when we look at what's happened previously with the revolution, with the internet, what happened in the early days is that the market leaders at that point in time, like Yahoo and AltaVista and that sort of thing, ended up being superseded by other market leaders and that were much more efficient and much more aggressive. So we could see that shift as well. One thing's for certain is that cryptocurrency is here to stay in the future. And the flip side of that as well is who knows that Bitcoin could also exceed a million dollars in value. So anything's possible. So how cryptocurrency mining is created is that computers run on solving complex algorithms and solving situations to create a token value. And 
some of that process is inefficient at the moment and very energy dependent. So the technology again will evolve past that, that point in time where people are already moving towards solar farms to create more efficient ways to create currency or also creating currencies that don't need to be energy dependent. The interesting thing about cryptocurrency as well, it's still very much in the early adoption phase, so it's estimated that there's probably less than 2% of the population in the world that have any cryptocurrency at the moment. And of that 2%, probably less than 4% are actually women. So it's speculated that probably a lot of women probably feel as if it's like it's, it's, it's a type of gambling. And it is highly speculative. As the market starts to mature, the fluctuations won't be as intensive. But having said that, I've met a lot of women that are in the crypto space that understand it as well. It takes a bit of a leap of faith and time to like get in the market and just like spend $100 on cryptocurrency and have an experience, get set up with a wallet, go to a cafe, go to a bar and spend some money in cryptocurrency. So the more that people have an interactive experience with cryptocurrency, um, it's like the quantum shift at the moment. So what's what they're saying as well is that it's the shift away from, it, it'll be what the um, email did to the postal service system. So it's that quantum shift, that generational thing as well. You know, it's like grandparents not wanting to use an ATM machine because they wanted to go into a bank and speak to someone, you know? So that's that shift in technology um, that's getting developed to create higher levels of security. Um, and there's a sense of sovereignty and responsibility that, that comes along with that, with people being educated and empowered for themselves and knowing what it's about, not rushing in and sort of getting caught up in Ponzi schemes and bits and pieces like that, finding good information, finding good communities, and getting educated and being aware of what's possible as far as the cryptocurrencies that are staying decentralized and able to be private. When it was mentioned to me in about 2012, I didn't act on it straight away. It was like, it sounds a little bit weird. I've got this whole sort of trust issue around um, cashless societies and um, transparency and yeah, I, I had some concerns and trepidation and that's natural as well. And that's why I didn't get involved with it earlier until I spent the time to do the research and um, find out what's possible. Some people are drawn into the cryptocurrency space because they've heard of huge gains that were able to be made and it's true, you know, it's like someone that invested $100 in cryptocurrency in 2010 would be worth, you know, $120, $125 million plus. So the gains in, that are there are to be made, but it like, it actually, it transcends that as well. It's actually, um, it's about creating community and creating transparency and fulfilling on projects that are important to people and bringing integrity to the financial system again. And creating projects that solve problems for people and it's exciting about actually what's really possible from humanity once we trans once we we move through this transitional phase at the moment it's a quite a quickening of evolving that's occurring at the moment the previous systems that we've had have served us although the, the they've been controlled by some of the very few and fractional reserve and debt-based banking systems no longer serve us. We need to be able to evolve to another system and to a new way of thinking and relating about currency, particularly in the areas of spirituality and that sort of thing where, um, where they should not be mutually exclusive. And there, sh there, there needs to be a system where that's, that's not debt-based system and that's not controlled by the few that people and communities get to create their own currency for themselves and get to interact and f develop systems of exchange that are fair and transparent for everyone that's involved.